gather your people, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord. Draw us forth to the table of life Brothers and sisters Each of us called To walk in your light Gather your people, O oh Lord Gather your people, O oh Lord are parts of the body of Christ, feeding each other, each of the gifts the Spirit provides. Gather your people, O oh Lord. Gather In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we come together on this third Sunday of Ordinary Time to give thanks and to give praise to God for the many blessings that you and I receive each and every day. May we never take those blessings for granted. May we always, always, always know how much God loves us and forgives us. For those times that we haven't responded to God's love with love, let's take a moment to ask God for God's pardon, God's peace, as well as that strength and the courage of our faith to choose better. Lord Jesus, you began your ministry by preaching repentance. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you called simple fishermen to follow you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us too in unexpected ways. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And together with all creation, let us join in as we give glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God.
God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father glory to God glory to God glory to God in the highest and on earth peace on earth peace to people of good will Amen Amen And let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let's be attentive to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the end he has glorified the seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled is darkness, for there is no gloom where, but now there was distress. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwell in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is 
my light and my salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean, each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Nephali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light, and those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. One of the television shows that Father Jack and I will often watch together is the game show called Jeopardy. Now, to be honest, I'm a casual fan, whereas Father Jack is a diehard. And one of the things that Jeopardy has confirmed for me is that I am not a genius. I am humbled by how little I know. And for the record, Father Jack is much brighter. 
Of course, occasionally Jeopardy has questions pertaining to religion or the law. Two areas I think, or at least I used to think, I had some grasp upon. But when the clue is given and I offer my response out loud about religion or the law, it is more often than not I'm embarrassed by my wrong answer. From that point on, I usually stay silent rather than further show my lack of mastery. I shouldn't be surprised, though, about my not knowing the right answer. I've shared this before, but it's apropos today in light of our gospel. Back when I was an undergraduate, I took a theology class called The Meanings of Jesus. In one of the first classes, the professor, a Franciscan priest by the name of Father Larry Landini, offered an additional credit to the first student who could successfully answer the following question. What was the gospel message of Jesus Christ? Now, having completed years of CCD and graduating from a Catholic Franciscan high school, I was confident that I had the right answer. So I raised my hand and said that the gospel message of Jesus Christ was love. I was immediately told that I was wrong. Next person. What? No one in the class got it right. And the professor then told us that the gospel message of Jesus Christ was simply the kingdom. Again, what? The professor then proceeded to point out that throughout the Gospels, Jesus is always, always saying the kingdom is like, the kingdom is like a mustard seed, the kingdom is like a treasure hidden in the field, whatever. But the bottom line is that the main message that Jesus preached consistently in the Gospels is the kingdom of God. Perhaps because I was embarrassed that I got the question wrong, but more likely because it touched my heart. I memorized the definition that our professor, Father Larry Landini, gave us for the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the power and presence of God's unconditional love reaching out to all creation, especially the marginated. In today's gospel, Jesus begins his public preaching ministry by proclaiming his vision of the kingdom of heaven. That vision is illuminated by the great light of God's justice and mercy that enables you and me to see ourselves and one another in all our dignity and goodness, in all our brokenness and failings. Jesus tells the story of God's love for God's people, a love that Jesus reveals in the compassion and healing of the kingdom of God, a kingdom that does not belong to some distant future, but is a part of the here and now. Jesus began his ministry by calling ordinary people, simple fishermen, to follow him in proclaiming the kingdom of God. What was it about this invitation to his disciples that appealed to them, caused them to accept it? They didn't know what was going to happen, but they embraced his message of mercy and hope of the kingdom of God. They weren't afraid or embarrassed to cast their nets in a new way, as Jesus showed them, to be fishers of women and men. Like his first disciples, Jesus Christ calls you and me to be fishers of people. He calls you and me to follow him and to preach the message of the kingdom in many ways, but most of them simple. We don't know where we will be led, and the majority of us aren't called to leave everything behind, but rather to let our daily life go through the gradual transformations that can turn every profession, every job, and all of our relationships 
into experiences of the kingdom of heaven. Our task is to keep our hearts and our minds open to God's calling, however and whenever it may come. And it comes in so many different ways. Long before I was a friar, shortly after law school, I was at a standstill in my career, and I was feeling pretty low. And I was still living here in Buffalo, and my sister and I decided to take my grandmother to Fort Erie for Chinese food. My grandmother loved Chinese food, and she loved Fort Erie. And as we got into the restaurant, we over by the windows sat someone that we all recognized. She was the main anchor of News 4 Buffalo, and her name was Carol Jason. Years earlier, when I was an undergrad, I had spent a summer interning at the CBS affiliate Channel 4 and was basically her gopher for the entire summer at the noon newscast. And it didn't take long for my grandmother to see her sitting there with her family. And my grandmother says to me, Greg, didn't you used to work with Carol Jason? You should go over to her and say hello. Now, I knew how little privacy some of these on-air talent would get when they were out, with their public, out in the public with their families. And on top of that, it had been at that point at least four years since I had worked as her intern. And it was an uneventful internship. I had no doubt that she wouldn't know who I was. And so I told my grandmother, I didn't think it was the right thing for me to go over there and bother her. And we left it at that. We ordered our meals and were having a good time when all of a sudden behind me, I felt two hands on my shoulder. I turned around and looked up and there standing over me was Carol Jason. And she said to me, I don't ever forget this. I apologize. I don't remember your name, but I know we used to work together and I wanted to stop by and say hello. It blew me away and lifted me up. I introduced her to my sister and to my grandmother, and I'm sure my grandmother went back and told everyone she knew at the senior center that she had met Carol Jason from Channel 4. When you think about it, it was a very small gesture on her part. And no one would have thought any less of Carol Jason if she had walked out of the restaurant and never said hello to me. But she did. And it was humbling as well as uplifting for me. What that experience showed me is this. Even if I'm not sure, I don't remember your name, that it is still okay for me to cast out my net to be there for someone, to build them up and simply acknowledge them, to make the kingdom of God real here and now. My sisters and brothers, you and, I may not, you and I may not see ourselves as fishers of women and men as Jesus called his first disciples to become. I think about how many times that maybe I haven't cast out my net to fish or catch people who might have been in need of my reaching out to them. But the reality is, we all possess nets that can catch the falling, rescue those in need, and gather those who have been lost and forgotten. Employing our God-given talents and gifts, you and I are called by Jesus Christ to fish for those who are struggling, who maybe have lost hope, who may not know that they are not only valuable and precious as being made in the image of God, but they are loved by God. You and I can help our brothers and sisters realize the good that they are and can be, showing them the real presence that God is in their lives. And it can be done as simply as it was done for me at a Chinese restaurant. I didn't know the answer back in college, but I know it now. Please, please, 
Don't let fear or possible embarrassment keep you silent or stymie you from casting out your net of love, care, and concern to someone who needs it. If you really want to know Jesus Christ in sharing the kingdom of God's love, then may you and I always fearlessly seek and boldly proclaim the kingdom of God in our words and in our actions to all whom we encounter. The power and presence of God's unconditional love reaching out to all creation, especially the marginated. May the Lord give you God's peace and all good. And let us now profess what we believe as we profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers because Jesus Christ, the great light of God, has dawned upon our world. In joyful hope, then, let us pray. <clears throat> For the church, that we continue to serve one another and to offer compassion, care, and support, especially to those in most need of it. For this we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those persecuted and marginalized, that there may be unity and mutual respect for everyone, no matter the age, orientation, ethnic background, or economic standing. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those facing challenges in their lives, for those affected by severe weather, and for the sick and homebound, for this we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our local communities, that we may truly care for our social and faith families with patience, acceptance, kindness, and forgiveness, for this we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering in body, mind, or spirit, and for continued healing for all those who have received prayer shawls from our parish, for them we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who have passed into new life this week, Monsignor J. Thomas Moran, Edith Moretta, Barbara Pearson, and for all those dearly departed who dwell in the peace of the eternal Lord, for them we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our personal needs and the intentions written in the parish book of prayers, which we now offer in the silence of our heart. For this we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord of light, dispel the darkness of our self-centeredness and ignorance. May these prayers we offer together be the first light of your presence in our homes and our communities. And we offer these prayers to you, O God, in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
delight in others in their hearts for you are my hands and you are my feet to all Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all, God's holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy. Through your beloved son Jesus Christ. Your word through whom you made all things. Whom you sent as our savior and redeemer. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit. And born of the virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks and praise, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, his brother bishops, and all the people that your son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles, with saints Francis and Clare of Assisi, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My sisters and brothers, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Though not physically present at this Mass, as the baptized, we are intimately united as the body of Christ as we participate in the spiritual Holy Communion.
darkness Christ be your light shine in your church gather I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let's go in loving peace to serve God by serving one another. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. From your slumber, arise from your sleep. A new day is dawning for all those who weep. The people in darkness have seen a great light. Conquered the night. Let us spill the city of God. May tears be turned into dancing for the Lord, our light and our love. Let's turn the night into day. Sons of the morning, we are daughters of day. The one who has loved us has brightened our way. The Lord of our kindness has called us to be. A light for his people to set their hearts free. Let us build the city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing for the Lord, our light and our Thank you again for joining us here online at St. Joseph University Parish. And I have the announcements, just a couple of them. The first being that the end of year tax statements, if you would like yours and you're a parishioner, we're asking people to sign up in the community room. But if you're homebound and you can't get here, I'm sure you can give a call to the office during normal business hours and we'll make sure you get your uh, tax statements. Second of all, we got this incredibly excellent uh, speaker coming in this week on Tuesday, January 24th at 7 p.m. It is Understanding Coercion-Based Human Trafficking. And our Parish Refugee and Immigration Committee is inviting folks to listen to Megan Tokash, who is an assistant U.S. attorney, um, speaking about how this is happening and some ideas of how we as a community may be able to respond. 
So again, that is Tuesday, January 24th at 7 p.m. in the community room right here at St. Joe's. And last but not least, uh, the J term or the summer, or the, uh, summer, I wish, winter break over next door at UB is ending. So next weekend, we will be rejuvenating our 7 p.m. student mass. So the students start right at the beginning, uh, the end of the month and for the beginning of February. So our 7 p.m. mass will be going on now until the end of the semester with only one weekend we don't have the student mass. No, not the Super Bowl, but Easter Sunday. So if you're around and about and want to join us for the Student Campus Ministry Mass, it's open to all, 7 p.m., restarting again next Sunday. Thank you for joining us here online. Know that you remain in our thoughts and our prayers, that you are part of the St. Joseph University Parish family. Thank you, and may God continue to bless you always with peace and all good. And who may go up the mountain of the Lord? Who can stand in his holy place? clean of hand and pure of heart who devoted their lives to him